Welcome to the Scurry Church of Christ. Dot org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. I think it is with, with music and instruments. And so we are under the new covenant today. But the question we're going to look at tonight is, uh, since there will, since there is, uh, since there will be musical instruments, in other words, since there will be instruments in heaven, we can use instruments today in the church. Okay, let's say that again. Since there will be instruments in heaven, we can use instruments today in the church, and that's what we're going to deal with tonight. Now. There are three verses in the book of Revelation, and that's where uh, they're coming from. And I, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for those who are listening and, and those who like to know uh, these things. Um, there are three verses in the book of Revelation, Revelation 5, 8, uh, Revelation 14, 2, and Revelation 15, 2. What I like to do is deal with each of those verses that uh, relate to that uh, convey or uh, mention the musical instrument in these verses as relates to singing. So today, this evening, we're going to talk about Romans uh, chapter, or rather Revelation chapter 15. That's what all we're going to deal with tonight, the, the verses, the verse in uh, Revelation 15 and verse 2. So I'd like you to go there. Let's read that. Revelation chapter 15 and verse 2. Remember, there's Revelation 5, 8, Revelation 14, 2, and Revelation 15, and verse 2. Tonight, we're going to talk about Revelation verse uh, uh, chapter 15, verse 2. Now, let's deal with the context, and let's see what he's saying. He let the Bible answer uh, this uh, question, or rather, this statement. It says in verse 2 of Revelation chapter 15, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire and those who had come uh, come of uh, come uh, <clears throat> all victorious from the beast and from his image and from the number of his name standing on the sea of glass holding harps of God in verse 3 they sang the song of Moses the bond servant of God and the song of the lamb saying okay so we see here that in this verse, chapter uh, verse two, you see it says standing on the sea of glass holding harps of God. Okay. So that harp is obviously an instrument. So we're going to deal with this. So I appreciate those who want to know. Let's look at now before look at verse one of chapter 15. And I saw another sign in heaven. Okay. So I saw another sign in heaven. So this is a sign is signifying something. It's pointing to something. A sign leads to something. And so I saw a sign, another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are at the last, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. So these are the complete plagues, the perfect plagues. So these, this is a sign. It's, it's, it's signifying something. Now remember, Revelation, we're going to, we're not going to deal with this tonight when we get to, I believe it's chapter 5, verse 8, we'll deal with the metaphors mm -hmm. and the simile. But Revelation uh, deals with uh, this uh, figurative language, imagery, you have metaphors, you have uh, mm -hmm. similes. And, and, and so these things, they, they dress it up. We'll get into that another time. But this is, this, this imagery, what is it leading to? And, and now, let's for a second before we go on, let's take this, let's take verse two, say we take it literally. I'm going to read it again. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire. So we have to take that literally. And those who had come off victorious from the beast and from the image and from the number of his name standing on the sea of glass. So you have, let's take that literally. You're standing on a sea of glass holding harps of God. So I didn't know that I have to look into that 
because I can't take that literally because we're talking about, he said in verse one, and I saw another sign in heaven. And we know that uh, in the heavenly realm, it's spiritual. There's no uh, materialistic things. There's no physicality, no physical in the heavenly realm. And so I can't take that literally because there's no physical in the heavenly realm. And I know that the, there's an imagery here. And, and so what is he saying? What is he trying to, what does he want me to understand here? Okay. Now I want you to understand this. Now this is talking about some victory because in verse two again, and I saw as it were a sieve glass mixed with fire and those who have come off victorious from the beast. Okay. Now those who we studied this before the beast, of course, from the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter seven, and there's some other passages, um, is the, that's the Roman empire. And, and we also looked at that. Uh, that's the Domitian, um, the emperor. You see that in, in chapter 13, let's go to chapter 13. Well, let's look at the context in chapter 13. We look at verse, um, um, verse two and, and the beast, which I saw was like a leopard and his feet, well, like those of a bear and his mouth, like the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him power and his stone and great authority. OK, look at verse uh, four. And they and they worship the dragon because he gave authority to the beast and they worshiped the beast, saying who was like the beast and was able to make wage war with him. And we see here in verse six and he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God uh, to his uh, uh Open his mouth to blaspheme and in, in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. That is those who dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and authority and authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. Now you see that and look at verse eight and all and all who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb who has been slain. And so th this, this is the problem here. So the church is suffering through uh, Rome, the Roman emperor, uh, they're suffering severely, but because of God, they, they were victorious. And so revelation chapter 15 is a song of victory to watch. You see what he says in verse two. Again, we just read chapter 13. We saw what the beast was doing, and, and we looked at Daniel to confirm that. And we did that previously. And so notice he's notice what he says that the victorious in verse two again. And I saw verse chapter fourteen, verse two. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had come off victorious from the beast and from his image. And from the number of his name, 666, standing on the sea of glass, holding arms of God. So the, this is a song of victory. So they were victorious. They overcame the beast. They overcame the tribulation. So as I read verse three, and they sang a song of Moses, the bond servant of God, the song of the lamp. See, they're singing the song of Moses. We're going to look at that. So this is a song of victory. Song of Moses was a song of victory. Watch, but we'll go to that. I'm going to read again in verse three. And they sang the song of Moses, the bond servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are thy ways. Thou king of the na thou king of the nations. He says, Who will who who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art alone art holy, for thou alone art holy. For all the nations will come and worship before thee, for thy righteous acts been uh, revealed. Okay? So this is a song of Moses. This is a victory song. Now, notice what the Bible says here. Let's go back to verse 2. And this is what we're dealing with this, chapter 15 and verse 2. Now, notice what it says. Let's read verse 2 again. I want to show you something. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had come off victorious, see, from the beast and from the image and from the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, holding arms of God. Now, notice in this imagery, uh, they are 
a holding. Okay, <clears throat> they're holding the hawks. It's it's, an, it's a picture. It's a picture. They're holding. The, they're not singing. In this passage, they're holding uh, arps of uh, harps of God. And it, it's it's you see it's 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 this imagery here. They're not. not but I want you to see they're not singing. They're they're not playing. They're not playing and singing. They're hold, It does say they're holding uh, the harp, holding harps of God. Now remember what I just said. This is this is imagery. Now this is this this can't be physical because there's there's no physicality in the heavenly realm. It's all spiritual. I'm, I'm going to show you that. But I want you to show you something else. That if you take this literally, what you, what you're going what one is going to have to do. Look at verse five. After these things, I looked in the temple of the tabernacle. After these things, I looked and the temple of the tabernacle of his test of testimony in heaven was opened. OK, and watch this. Verse six. And the seven angels who had the seven players came out of the temple, clothed in linen, clean and bright and girded around their breasts with golden girdles. And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Now look at verse eight. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. There's no way that this is a physical temple in the heavenly realm. I want you to understand that, okay? Anyone would agree that the physical temple is not in the heavenly realm. There's no materialist, there's no material there. There's no physical, it's, it's so spiritual. So when I look at verse two and I look at the rest of the passage, I see that there's an imagery here. He's painting a picture. He wants me to see something. I can't take this literally. So if I say, if I look at this verse and say, well, these are physical harps in the heavenly realm, then I, I must look at verse eight and the other version say, well, there's a physical temple in the heavenly realm. You see, and you see also look at chapter six. You see, notice the imagery in chapter six. Look at chapter six and verse nine. <clears throat> Chapter 6, verse 9. He says, and when he broke the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. Okay. So does that mean there's a, a physical altar in the heavenly realm? Can't be. It's all spiritual. Okay. Nothing physical enters the heavenly realm. That's just a fact. He's also painting a picture here. He's using the ark to make his point. Look at chapter 20. Uh, let's look at chapter 20. Watch this. Chapter 20. Jeremiah, if you give, uh, Jeremiah is going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, and he's going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 uh, and through, five, two, through chapter 5 and verse 1. You got it? Chapter 4 verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, and you're going to read verse 18, 4 and verse 18, and 5, chapter 5 verse 1. Got mm -hmm. it? No, not now. Okay. Now watch this. In chapter 20, watch, listen to this, in verse 1, And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. Okay? So I saw an angel coming down from heaven, and he saw this. This is, this is a vision. This is the imagery. He's seeing this. He's seeing this picture. Now, where's the angel coming? He's coming down from the heaven. I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having a great, having the great key of the abyss and a great train in his hand. So he saw that. This is the picture. Now, an angel, this this spiritual, we're seeing it, it's, it's imagery, 
And Angel's not going to have a physical chain in his hand. He's making a point here. He's he's making a, he's showing us something here. He's using this figurative language, these metaphors. See? Now listen, and he laid hold of the dragon, the servant of old, who is a devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the abyss and shut him and sealed it over him so that he should not deceive the nations no longer until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. Okay, so can you take a chain? See, see, can you take a, and I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. <clears throat> you can't, it's, it's all imagery. You, the devil <clears throat> is a spiritual being. He ha, Spiritual beings have no flesh. That's why in the book of Matthew, they don't marry. We'll be like the angels of heaven. We're not going to be, in, 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 not going to be in marriage. They, they don't have physical flesh. They're all spiritual. You can't take a spiritual being and bind him with a physical chain. You can't take that literally. He's making a point here that Satan is going to be bound. Now that we study that, when Rome is destroyed, Satan will no longer be able to uh, try to uh, destroy the church through Rome because Rome is going to be destroyed. And we saw in Revelation chapter 13 that the beast was Rome. And so when Rome was destroyed, which God did, Revelation chapter 18 and 19, didn't conquer Rome. He destroyed Rome. It happened. Satan could no longer work through Rome. So he's bound. So the chain has a point. The heart have a point. And so let's go back to chapter 15. So I know from there that I cannot, Jeremiah, I cannot take this literally. Okay. Now I want to let's look. Jeremiah's going to read. I'm trying. He's going to read Second uh, Corinthians chapter. Uh, what did I tell you? Second Corinthians chapter four and verse eighteen, and, and chapter five, verse one. <clears throat> Some are arrogant, as though I were not coming to you. In chapter five, it is actually reported that there is Second Corinthians. Oh, Second Corinthians. I'm sorry. I said it like three times. <laughs> Sure. All right, so he, I'm going to go to first credit. I'm, what we're going to do here, we, we're going to, I want to make sure you see that the heavenly realm is spiritual. Jeremiah is going to get second Corinthians. I'm going to go to first Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, while he's looking for second Corinthians, in first Corinthians chapter 15, I'd like you to turn it with me, verse 42. I'm going to read this quickly. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, 42. And so he says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in a perishable body. It is raised in a imperishable body. So it, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in, in, in power. It is sown in a natural body. It is raised in a spiritual body. See, this is when we uh, make it to the heavenly realm. It's a spiritual body. It's a place. Of, it's a spiritual place, not physical. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Okay. Nothing physical about it. So also, so also it, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became life giving a life giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not the spiritual is. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. See, that's what we'll look forward to the spiritual. Right now, we're in the natural. We're looking forward to the spiritual. OK, the first man is from the earth, earthly. The second man is from heaven. OK. As the earthly, as is the earthly, so also, so also, uh, so so also are those who are earthly, and as in the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. See, and just as we have born, just as we, just as we have born, the image of the earthly, we shall also <clears throat> bear the image of the heavenly. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the imperishable inherit the imperishable. See? So we're talking, what does 2 Corinthians uh, say, Jeremiah? As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Okay. So we're talking about the things that are unseen. We're talking about the heavenly realm. Uh, let's go back to chapter 15. 
So I want you to, I want us to understand that he's, it, it, this is a, it, nothing physical goes into the heavenly realm. But for all of us to, all of, in order for us to understand, he's going to present this picture. I can yeah. understand, I know what, a, I, I know what a harp represents. Okay. So when he talks about harps and instruments, I know what they represent. I've been to an orchestra before, uh, orchestra before, and it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what it sounds like, all those instruments uh, together and the professionals playing it perfectly. <laughs> It, it 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 brings forth a great a wonderful beautiful sound so the, the holding they're holding harps and you see the shows are victorious and they sang the song of moses let's go to this now so let's see what this means then okay let's go to songs of moses i want we're going to go to revelation chapter 15. revelation chapter 15. And while I'm doing that, I'd like someone to uh, get Ephesians, hold Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 through 22. So someone please hold Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 through 22. And someone uh, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Okay. I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 15, the song. Now notice how. The Bible mentions the song of Moses. Look at verse 19 of Exodus chapter 15. This is a song of victory. Now, why is it a song of victory? Because God conquered the Egyptians. You remember the Red Sea? They drowned in the Red Sea. The Israelites were afraid. They were able to pass through dry land. And once they all passed through, when the Egyptians tried to pass through the sea, they were drowned in the Red Sea. Who did that? The people were obedient by doing what God said to do. They had to cross the Red Sea. They had to trust in God. And then once they did that, God closed the Red Sea and all the Egyptians drowned in the Red Sea. So God caused the victory. And after the victory, they were singing a victory song. Remember in chapter in chapter 15 verse 8 we saw that they were victorious they were victorious they did not bow down to the beast and because they're victorious they're singing the song of Moses a victory song who conquered the beast God did so <clears throat> they're singing they're celebrating singing this song now watch in let's go uh, again Exodus 15 and verse 19 for the horses of Pharaoh with the chariots, with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea. And the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. Watch this. So that's victory, right? God did it. Verse 20. And Miriam, the prophet, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took the timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancing. And Miriam answered them, see, sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea, okay? And if you read before that, you'll see uh, the song that in verse one that Moses and the son of Israel sang this song and to the Lord uh, and said, so they're singing the song of victory. Let's go back to chapter 15. They're singing the song of victory. It's a song of victory. Okay. I'm going to go back there. Now watch, I want you to stay with me. Verse two again of chapter 15. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mixed with fire and those who had come off victorious from the beast and from his image victorious see from the beast that's rome and from the number of his image 666 standing on the sea of glass holding arps of god as he's saying this not literally he's saying this picture here and they, they 
what he wants to see. They sang the song of Moses. They sang. They are singing a victory song. Okay, that's the point. They're singing a, a song of victory. I'm going to read this a few verses. Watch this. In Psalms 32, Psalms 33, 2, give thanks to the Lord with the lyre, make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. See? In First Chronicles, First Chronicles 15, 16. And the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with the poles. And as Moses had commanded according to the word of the Lord, David also commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their brothers as singers who should play loudly on musical instruments, on harps and lyres and cymbals to raise sounds of joy. See, First Chronicles 15, 16, sounds of joy, victory. victory. Now watch, I want you to turn to um, 2 Samuel. <clears throat> if you would turn to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 4, and hold your spot at... Holy Spot at, at, at Revelation chapter 15, 2 Samuel chapter 4, rather chapter 5. Watch this. Watch the song of victory, chapter 5. So, of course, David has to battle the Philistines, and because of the hand of God, they are victorious. Okay. They're victorious, and notice. Let's let's skip uh, let's skip a lot of verses. Let's go to chapter five. Let's go to verse twenty-five. So that's Second Samuel chapter five, verse twenty-five. Then David did so just as the Lord had commanded him, and struck down the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. So David did what God commanded him to do. See, obedient to God, had faith in God, followed God's instructions, and he was successful, victorious. Just like Revelation chapter 13, 14, and 15. Song of Moses, victory. Revelation, the song, they were victorious over the beast. Notice, notice in chapter 6, verse 1, notice what David does. Now David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. To celebrate in his victory. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him at Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by uh, the name, the very name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned above the cherubim. See, you see here the ark, this is a the literal ark, but in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, it's it's an image. You see, and they placed the ark of God on the new cart, and they that they might bring it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah in Ohio, the sons of Abinadab were leading the new cart, and they brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Ohio was walking ahead of the ark. Meanwhile, listen to this. Meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating, see? That's what he wants us to see, the victory in chapter 15. He says, and meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of fir wood and with lyres, with lyres, harps, tamarines, castanets, and cymbals, see? They're celebrating this victory. You notice there's, a, there's the harp there, harps. So when I look at the when I see when I look at Revelation chapter um, when I look at the image I'm I'm looking at the celebration I, I'm looking at the victory I'm tied it in with the victory now what, I, I, what I'm not finished yet I, I'm gonna <clears throat> but I want you to see that so the issue the, the I like the harp and the harp in Revelation chapter fifteen because it, it reminds me of a celebration. A celebration of victory. Uh, they, they when they celebrated, they sang praises to God. Remember that they were. We talked about that uh, last week and the week before last. That 
that was they were doing those things, worshiping God that way with the instruments because they were found the old covenant. In second, I think the Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, first or second Chronicles, I think it's Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine. Okay, so they were just doing what God required them to do. They were celebrating. When we sing today, it's a celebration. When we worship God uh, on Sunday mornings, we're celebrating. It's we're celebrating the death of Christ. We're singing praises to God. We we appreciate so much what He what He's doing for us and what He continues to do for us. What He has done for us in the past. The fact that we. Uh, are saved. We did what God required. Those who did what God required them to do, and God, they were baptized for ministry. God adds them to the church, His kingdom. In Acts two forty seven, where salvation is, and so that's that's when. And so, if I stay faithful by the grace of God, you see, I'm not doing what God. I'm not earning my salvation. I'm just doing what God requires me to do. That I'm going to be with God forever. And so, when I'm singing praises to God, I'm I'm just I'm celebrating. I'm happy. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm so, it's a joyful noise because what God did for me. You know, it's how we sing praise to God and then we, we take the Lord's Supper. We remember the death of Christ and what he done for us. And, and then we, we sing again after that. We sing, we sing after that, before that. It's victory. I mean, we're victorious. Now watch. Revelation chapter 18, watch this. I'm just making a point. Revelation chapter 18. Look at verse 22. This is the opposite of the celebration. <laughs> this is for those who are not victorious. Now watch how he does this. In chapter 18 and verse 22, or rather 20, he says, chapter 18, Revelation chapter 18 and verse uh, 20. Rejoice over her, O heavens, and you saints and apostles and prophets, because God has pronounced judgment for you against her. He's talking about Rome, the beast. And a strong angel took up a stone like a great millstone <clears throat> and threw it into the sea, saying, thus will Babylon, the great, be thrown down with violence and will not be found anymore. This Babylon represents Rome. Babylon was the second empire. The Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greeks. Uh, no, it was the Assyrians, the Babylonians, Medo-Persia, the Greek empire, and then Rome, I believe that's correct. So I believe they were second. They, yes, they came after the Assyrian empire. And so this is, this is not literally Babylon. This is Rome, but this is pitch he's, he's using Babylon see thus will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence remember Babylon was so great remember Nebuchadnezzar and God conquered them threw them down just like he did Rome but notice this is not a vic victory song it's a song of unpleasure a song of uh, suffering and difficulty judgment and notice what he said in verse 22. And the sound of the harpers and the musicians and the flute players and trumpeters will not be heard in you any longer. And no craftsmen of any craft will be found in you any longer. And the sound of a mill will not be heard in you any longer. But notice that again. Notice the victory song in, in Revelation chapter 22 with the harp. That's a victory song, the image there. Got it? It's a celebration. God did it. God caused the, the, he said he's going to conquer Rome and he did. And, and the saints feel that and they're celebrating that. Okay. Here you see this imagery, you see this image. When he conquers Rome, there's not going to be a celebration. It's not a victory song. And notice again in verse 22. So the Psalms of the harpers and the musicians and the flute playing in, in, in uh, trumpeters will not be heard in you any longer. I mean, you, they're not going to celebrate. They're going to be suffering. See, that's the opposite. In uh, Job, listen to Job 30, 31. 
Notice what Job said in chapter 30, verse 31. Therefore, my harp is turned to mourning. See, my harp is turned to mourning. And my flute to the sound of those who weep. Job was suffering. Now watch this, just to make a point. Let's go to Ezekiel 26. I'm going to read Ezekiel 26, but whole Revelation chapter 15, because that's what we're dealing with. Ezekiel chapter 26, you see it again. I'll give you time. Ezekiel chapter 26. I'm going to read verse 13, and I'm going to look at a few verses and show you what the point is here. But look at verse 13. Let's do that first. Of Ezekiel chapter 26. He says, so I will silence the sound of your songs and the sound of your harps will be heard no more. Okay. Who's he talking to? God's going to do that. God is going to do that. Who's he talking to? Look at verse one of chapter 26. Now it came about in the 11th year on the first of the month that the word of the Lord came to me saying, <laughs> son of man, because Tyra has, because Tyra has said concerning Jerusalem, aha, the gateway of the peoples is broken. It has opened to me. I shall be filled now that she is laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Tyra. I will bring up many nations against you as a sand, as the sea brings, brings up its waves. And they, and they will destroy the walls of Tyra and break down her towers. And I will scrape her debris from her and make her a bare rock. You can read on and more, more about that as you read on. What happened is when the Babylonians conquered Israel, uh, Judah, instead of their brethren uh, helping them or doing what they, you know, just, they took advantage of it. They took advantage of it. They took advantage of it. They uh, ridiculed them, et cetera, and they just took advantage of whatever they could take advantage of. They took whatever, they, and, and so God saw all that, and he's gonna punish them for doing what they've done. Notice he said in verse 13 again, so I will silence the sound of your songs and the sound of your harps will be heard no more. No victory, no victory, no victory. But in chapter 15 is victory. Revelation chapter 15 is victory. So let's look at Revelation chapter 15 again in verse two, because I want you to get the point. Go back there for me. And I saw, it, I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had come up victorious from the beast and from the image and from the number of the, his image standing on the sea of glass holding arps of God. Were, he's seeing the picture. They're holding their harps. And what did they sing? The song of, they sang the song of Moses, the, the bond servant of God, the song of the lamp sang, see? Okay. Before we close, who has, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 through 22. And who has 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5? I got Ephesians 2, 18 through 22. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. <clears throat> it says, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed growth unto the holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built, built together for a habitation of God through the spirit. See, who has first Peter two verse five. Troy, uh, you also as living stones are being built up a spirit, being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So as you read those, as they, they read those two verses, you see that this is a spiritual house. This is us. And so when I connect this, when I connect that to Revelation chapter 15, now look at this again, look at verse eight. And the temple was filled with smoke. That's not a physical temple from the glory of God. And from its power, and from its power, and 
no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues and the seven angels were uh, finished. Uh, we talked about that another time. I'm not going to have time to go with that tonight. But the church is with God. The church is with God. God is with the church. The church is with God. That's basically. And when and when God punishes Rome, what happened in the old? If you go back to the old the old covenant, what 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 did, what did the priests do in the old in the old covenant? Well, they made the sacrifices. Uh, they made you know be, through the sacrifices they they made things right with God. Okay. And, you know, when when the high priest went into the temple once a year to uh, sacrifice the sins for Israel, the whole nation, he made things right with God. And the point here is that the, 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 you see the glory that and of course, the priests were the ones who were doing the work in the temple. And we're not going to go over that time. We're the priests today. So the point is that if you notice that the temple is filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. In other words, God's going to punish Rome and no one could, no one is going to stop him. A saint could pray for Rome to not be punished. But in other words, no, there's, you can't make any sacrifice. You, in other words, it, it's going to happen. God is going to do what he's going to do. It's like what it's if you read the old covenant, we're not gonna I want to go up so bad, I'm not gonna do it. But when it, you see that when it was literally happening, the, the cloud, the glory was so it filled up the temple that the priests weren't able to do anything in there. I mean you see Exodus chapter 40, verse 34 to 38. I believe first Kings chapter 8, verse 10 to 11, Second Chronicles 5 and 14. It was so cloudy that they could not do any work. If you can't do any work, you can't make any sacrifice, you can't you can't make things right with God. <clears throat> And that's the whole point here. The temple is spiritual. And so remember, in, Re in Revelation 15, verse 2, uh, it's not the harps. It's not a physical harp. He's making a point here. It's a, it represents the, the sounds of victory. They're singing a song of victory. It's a great melody. It's like I, I wrote down the harps. They symbolize the beautiful sound of the song that was being played. They symbolize the beautiful sound uh, of the song that was being sung. See, it symbolizes the sound of the song that was being sung. That's it. That's it. It. it that's what it does. We appreciate everyone studying with us tonight and those who uh, uh, look later. Thank you for studying with us. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email us. We will do our best to answer scripturally any question that you mm -hmm. may have. Remember what the question, remember what the statement was. Uh, since there will be instruments in heaven, we can use instruments today in the church. Not according to, with all the respect, but not according to Roman Revelation chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, or Revelation chapter 15, verse 2. <clears throat> the next uh, verses we'll cover uh, next week will be Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, or Revelation chapter 15 or 14, verse 2. We're going to cover these three verses. If anyone here needs the prayers of the saints, please make yourself known as you sing the song for the invitation. Who?